All right, Shalom, 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 Sh
The sleep of a laboring man is sweat, whether he eat little or much. So no matter how much you may eat or drink, you still have the labor for your life. And I'm talking about, I'm talking to the Israelites, so-called Negro, Latinos, and Native Americans. We're princes of God, but we have the labor to this very day. Going back to Adam, the Lord told Adam, you must live by the sweat of thy brow. That means that we have to be laborious in our works as well. But the abundance of the rich would not suffer him to sleep. There is a sore evil which I have seen under the sun, namely riches kept for the owners thereof to their hurt. But those riches perish by evil travail, and he begetteth a son, and there is nothing in his hand. As he came forth of his mother's womb, naked shall he return to go as he came, it shall take nothing of his labor, which he may carry away in his hand. So this is talking about you laboring in a society, and there's nothing for you after. Because they have like a minimum wage. When the book of Haggai is saying, you labor to put um, money into a pocket that have holes. And, and like, we don't have generational wealth, but unless you're a football player, a basketball player, some kind of entertainer, or whether you took a bag by selling out, i.e., uh, IUIC with a 501 c charge. They literally got something called a minimum wage, meaning that legally, by the federal law, you can pay someone this X amount of money. So you're making all this money, but not all this money, you're making this money just for you to keep your head above water. Now you may have savings and savings and savings, right? You can save a hundred dollars every every um paycheck. It probably had like two or three grand by the end of the year. But what happened when COVID hit? They said like over sixty to seventy percent of everyone's savings was wiped out within the first month or two. So you really don't have no place. So you really don't have no stable ground here. It's all vanity here. And we, the men of the Lord, we know how it works. When you go back up to the book of Luke, the second chapter, when it speaks about how they had to go pay taxes, when you pay taxes, you're a tributary to someone. When you're a tributary to someone, that means that you're um you're under subjugation of them, meaning that you're under their rulership. That's why it's vexing to live here. Because you can borrow money from the bank and they give you like a 20% interest or something like that. And then according to the seven day is the seven month um there's a law. Like the law of the land. I mean, I'm sorry, not the law of the land. The law of um, the land Sabbath. You till the ground, right? Then you leave the ground alone for six for six years, so it can rejuvenate and replenish itself. And then you can go back to that land. Same thing with your credit. If your credit's bad, that's supposed to be a law. But after the seventh year, that debt you're done with that debt. But these debts, these debts will travel. They'll follow you all the way to your last breath. To the point you saw a habit if some if someone's relative passes away and they have a debt they'll try to collect the debt the dead person's debt from their family why not just let them die in peace and let their family go on in peace as well but that's the double for you man for the rich eat up the poor the rich take the poor all right let the scripture say what business is there in um what business is the rich is a righteous man with a wicked man same thing with the poor with the rich the rich, the rich of all the poor, man. They hate us. Okay? So going back, this is um, Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 17. All of his days, also he eateth in darkness, and he had much sorrow, right? And wrath with his sickness. Oh, that which I have seen, it is good and come before one to eat and drink. And to enjoy the good of all his labor that he that he taketh under the sun all the days of his life, which God giveth him, but it is his portion. So it's like Jay, it's just they 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 work and they say, Man, I can't wait to the weekend. Why they can't wait to the weekend? Not just because they don't have to work, but because they know on the weekend everybody go to the club, everybody wanna party, everybody wanna get together and have a good time. Just like just like how they have football on Sundays. Go to church on Sunday, right? Which is a song worship. Then after that, everybody ready to break out to go get their beer, to go smoke their weed, to go sit in front of a TV, to hoot and holler and curse and act all 
and, and all kinds of barbarous matters, man. That's what this society has, has come to, why the elite, the conglomerate, they're behind the scenes, behind the curtains, trying to find a way on how they can reduce the world population to 500 million, according to the Georgia Godstone, which they took down recently. Going back to Ted Talk with, um, going back to Ted Talk with, the Ted Talk to Ted TV, with Bill Gates, like what was it, 2016, 2014, he said, we can reduce the world population by 14%. He said with birth control uh, and uh, with vaccine. He said that himself. All right? So this is the world that we live in. Going back to Ecclesiastes 1 and 14. Have seen all the works that are done under the sun, and behold, all this vanity and vexation of spirit. So I just read how a man will work, sweat, whether he's rich, whether he's poor. But really, the poor will work and sweat. But in regards to what that man does, he'll never be poor, he'll never be satisfied. And yes, it's good that a man should, should um, reap the benefits should reap the benefits of his labor. But even Yahweh Shai, who was a king, King Solomon said, it's all still vanity. Right? Ecclesiastes 1 and 15. That which is crooked cannot be made straight. And that which is wanting cannot be numbered. So Jay thinking, but he thinking about Esau going to actually have compassion and love on them. They show you, man, that they despise you and they hate you. They don't. We talking about that just going back to the times of Christopher Colon. You got to go back to the times of entire Epiphanes when they had the Ptolemies, they had the Cassandra, they had the Seleucid, and they had the um, the Simeon's dynasty. All right, when they had those, when they had those promises, but what happened? And Tigers the Pippin is the fourth, went into the went into the um our temple and they sacrificed swine on there, man. They told it to, they told our women they couldn't circumcise our sons. And if they didn't see them doing that, they would take our children and then they would they would they would throw them over the wall, they'll hang them from the wall, man. Or they'll bash their heads against the stone. That's why King David said, um, happy shall he be that taking thy little ones and bash their heads against the stone. Remember, the scripture says, surely impression make it the wise man mad. So those that have the wisdom of the scripture, but not of this world, of course we are oppressed because not only we know what's happening to us physically, but we can see it's happening to us mentally and spiritually. Even the foods that we consume, the water that we consume, have they ever fixed that problem in Flint? Right? How is it Brett Foster and the money from the poor people down in Mississippi, but ain't nobody trying to say nothing, ain't nobody, you know, ain't nobody batting the eye at that situation, man. He saw I will show you they hate you. I just saw there was an article out where it's Jay. I guess he was adopted by some Edomites, or whatever. And Sandra Bullock then had made a movie, but they cut him out of getting money from the movie. So they use they use his story, his hardship, to make a game from it, and then they just disposed of him. There's no different than what they used to do to us when they, when they treated us like cattle when we was being hardcore bundle. One slave or die. They have a patient with another slave. That's how they look at it. You know, even my even my boss was telling me at my job today. He a Jake too. He on he on people might be he look like Judah. Like yo, at this job, man, just keep up composure, your mind, and all of that. Because at the end of the day, no matter how good you are, you can always be replaced. And that's what it's like in this society. And that's the, that's the beautiful thing about this about this um this faith, man. Not all men have faith, and faith is a gift. So. You don't want to be, I mean, you can be replaced by any job. That's fine. Find you another job. What you don't want to do is be replaced by the Rawa HaKadosh to where the Lord happens to where somebody else will take your stead. Or the Lord take the spirit from you. You don't want to be replaced like that. Prime example would be Judas Iscariot. Judas Iscariot, he lied to the Lord. He, well, not lied. Let me take that back to the Lord knew what he was going to do. He betrayed, he put, um, betrayed the Lord, right? And then he got then he got replaced with um I think Matthias in in Acts the first chapter. Man, that was a B. In Acts the first chapter, man, he got replaced. So you don't want that. Going back, Ecclesiastes 1 and 16. I commune with my own heart, saying, Lo, I am come to great estate and have gotten more wisdom than all they that have been before me in Jerusalem. This King Solomon speaking right here. Yea, 
my heart had great experience of wisdom and knowledge. So think about think about the elders of Great Millstone. All the knowledge of wisdom and understanding that those men possess and like my demand on down, how to this day, 30, 25, 20, 15 years later, these men are still humble. These men are still still wise and, and keen and have an acumen to what's really going on, correlate the scriptures with history and everyday life. Why is that? But they're humble. And the scripture clearly said, matter of fact, I'm going to get it. It speaks about the Lord, the Lord revealing the secrets unto the lowly. Let's get that. That's why the world despises us because we look, we are the lowly, you know, like the Lord said, the last shall be first and the first shall be last. And we're last right now. That, that's one of the curses. The Lord said that they shall be the head, we will be the tail, and we shall go to one in need of all things of our enemy. They want the food, water, raiment, all of that. Right? So this is the book of Sirach, chapter 3. Sirach 3 and 18. The greater thou art, the more humble thyself and thou shalt find favor before the Lord. Many are in hard place and of renown, but mysteries are revealed unto the meek. All right? And Yahweh Shai, who was King Solomon, was meek. But the Lord told him, you can have whatever you want. He took the humble route. He said, this is such a great people. He said, how, how can I rule them? Give me knowledge with them without the same. And that was a very, that's a very humble thing to say. Rather than ask for the tangible things, he asked for the intangible things and how he can dictate the tangible things which would be the people. Right? And he became a great king. So look at us as being the lowly and having this great knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Because we're because we're being put in position to become great kings, to, be, to become great lords and rulers over the earth in righteousness. Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 17. I'm going to read 16 and 17 so you can understand why I brought that out. It's a rock. I commune with my own heart, saying, Lo, I have come to great estate and have gotten more wisdom than all they that have been before me in Jerusalem. Yea, my heart had great experience of wisdom and knowledge. We're talking about gold and we're talking about gold, gold forks, gold spoons, gold plates, gold um goblins or drinking, you know, cups, to the point where even the Queen of Sheba thought the doorkeeper was King Solomon. He had it all, he was decked out. So in his mind, he's thinking, like, yo, I got this, I got that, I got this, I got that, right? Verse 17, and I gave my heart to know wisdom and to know madness and folly. I perceive that this also is vexation of spirit. For in much wisdom is much grief. And he that increases knowledge increases sorrow, right? That goes back to when you, when you eat the roll, the roll in your mouth is sweet at first. But then as you start to digest it, it starts to get bitter. The sweet part is you're an Israelite. You are, you are a son of God. When well, I say a daughter of Sarah, so to say, and that salvation is for us, we are, that we are the lost sheep of the house of Israel, that we are the people of the Bible, that the mystery of Babylon, which we had to build up, is going to be destroyed. All, right? All the men, we're going to have women that no other man have known or touched. All the women are going to be feminine, Cooperative, thick, submissive, timid, God fearing, and respectful towards us. Our children, we shall know our children, they shall know their father. All these great things, that's the sweet part of it. They want the bitter. The enemies of your household could be your mother, your father, your brother, your sister, right? You will have to sacrifice something in this world in order for you to in order for you to gain Sophia, which is wisdom. Like your household sacrificed himself. For us to obtain this wisdom, what are you willing to sacrifice on this side, right? Just, just to um to contain this wisdom, like that old man being cast away, and then you becoming a new creature, right? So that's the bitter of it all. He had increase of wisdom, increase of sorrow, because now that you know, now that you know better, and that you're doing better, you know, you know who also else know that you know better, and you're trying to do better, Satan. Because the Lord deals with both sides. You got to understand that. That's the aspect of it all. The Lord controls everything on earth, man. Let's get to it. Isaiah. This is the book of 
Isaiah chapter 45 and 7. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. How about she how about do all these things? So when you think about all the evil, all of all of um, the time that you get tried and you get pressed, that goes back to you gathering knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. That's why we, the righteous, were vexed in the society because he's wrong by the wicked, right? Because wisdom trying to make it the wise man mad. We we come to know the discernment between what's good and what's wicked, what's righteous and what's wicked, so to say, right? Damn, spirit is hitting me right now. I'm throwing out peace up now. This is um so rock chapter four. It's talking about wisdom. It's talking about wisdom. So rock chapter four, verse 14. They that serve her shall minister to the holy one. And them that love her, the Lord doth love. It's talking about wisdom. So we're ministers to the Lord, the holy one. All right, meaning that we're his servants. And so he's our master. Okay. Verse 15. Whoso giveth error to her shall judge the nations. We have the right to judge the nations. Isaiah 54 and 16, where it clearly says that um, no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. And then it goes on to speak that uh, anyone that opened their tongue against us in judgment, we shall condemn. That's a part of our heritage, too. Prophets can't condemn. He's talking about judgment, man. Okay. And he that attendeth unto her shall dwell securely. If a man commit himself unto her, he shall inherit her, and her and his generation shall hold her in possession. For at the first she will walk with him by crooked ways, and bring fear and dread upon him, and torment him with her discipline, until she may trust his soul. Oh, Lord, 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 Lord. Now think about it, because that reminds me, um, they were talking about the Miami Heat. You think about it, if you think about the Miami Heat players, none of the players in Miami get in trouble. You gotta keep that in mind. You're talking about you are you an NBA player, you make millions of dollars. You play for Miami Heat and you don't get in no trouble because there's a certain program there that you have to pass, you have to get through in order for you to get to that higher level, man. It's like if it was so easy, everybody would be in the gym. Bench pressing 225 pounds. If it was so easy, people would maintain their, their, their BMI annually. If it was so easy, people, I mean, it's, it's, it's called discipline, right? Everybody's not disciplined. Everybody can follow instructions, but nobody can discipline yourself, right? But discipline requires you to be at your absolute best when no one's watching. So you see people go to church. They present themselves, they want to be seen. But at home, they're the damn devil. To act like God, to act like fools in front of everybody, at home, they're the worst thing ever, right? So wisdom tries you to see if you're fit for the battle. Once you come out here, you fit for the battle. Because now you can contend for the faith. It's called it's called a contend for the faith anyway, because you, it's a battle. You're not battling against somebody. you battle against the essence of the spirit. That's the difference. So it's so rock chapter 4. We'll read again. Verse 17. For at the first she will she will walk with him by crooked ways and bring fear and dread upon him and torment him with her discipline until she may trust his soul and try him by her laws. And try him by her laws. That's why I don't deserve double honors, man. Right? Now, what those men had to go through to obtain their knowledge, wisdom, and understanding is. Whew, Just like, just like when they had the council about Cornelius being an Israelite. Shalom, shalom, Makwakia. How about Shemal Shabbat? Shemal Fakadash, Barak, and Thumb. Just like when the elders had to be, they were being defamed and ridiculed about breaking out the whole Cornelius doctrine thing, right? About Cornelius being an Israelite, about them being kicked out. Then they started their own thing. And listen, I remember Elder Apostle Gabar said it was at one point that they were like sleeping on a train. 
one point they had to split a burger. We're talking about grown men, though. These are the same men who, who deserve double honor. Because they forsook it all. These men are so wise, they, they can go out there and be whatever they want to in life, but they chose to be the servants of the Lord because the Lord chose them. You understand? Well, you, if you not understand what I mean, they, they put their hand to the fire. And they and they go through a lot of hardships to obtain the wisdom that they have, but people think it's so easy just for you for you to obtain the position that they have, and they remain humble in it. Only time the is gonna get on you if you do something that's contrary to the doctrine. Other than that, okay, you may not like to eat beef, but you like chicken. Who cares? Just don't break the law. And just don't lay a stump in the block before your brothers and sisters. So the elders, what they've done, it shows you that the wisdom that they obtained because wisdom had to try them. It had to be tried. You all. By standing firm on what the scriptures say about the law. Then what it said is the wizard gonna try them by the law, right? They spoke about the law on rape. Everybody wanna try to call them rapists. They wanna call them um uh, pedophiles and all this and that. But out of all the 30 years, 25, 20, 15, whatever 20 years that they've been preaching, nobody else will speak on the other matters that they speak on. But they want to use the emotions of the people to try to, to try to defend those men. And one of the people who did that was Brother Polite. Lo and behold, now he down in Miami. He got a court case because he drunk. And because when they say, oh, he, he, he oh, had sex with the other, quote unquote, underage girl. Right? So this is Sirach chapter 4, verse 18. Then will she return the straight way unto him and comfort him and shew him her secrets. That's why, it's, that's why you have to be tried. Because we're talking about wisdom of the Lord is a secret. A secret is some, isn't something that's given to everybody, right? Like the scripture says, many are called, but few are chosen. And I always use the analogy, anybody can pick up a katana, but if you don't know how to wield a sword, you can cut your sword. Anybody can pick up the Bible and try and bring out certain precepts, but even you can cut yourself, because like the scripture says, the word of the Lord is a two-edged sword, sharpening any, um, sharpening any tongue, no, it's a two-edged, yeah, sharp, two-edged sword. All right, and so you could get cut or you could cut somebody with it by the same word. So you have to be trying like that. It's like growing up, growing up in the hood, you will play countless, countless, countless pickup games, right? Then you play AAU basketball, then you play junior high basketball, then you play high school, you play college. But everybody's not gonna get a spot to play in the in the NBA, right? So you so you gotta you gotta go through the crucible. You have to go through that spiritual crucible and get refined first. So that's why it, that's why it's not easy for people to just go out into the world and let them know the Lord's going to destroy you. There has to be a certain character about the certain, certain spirit inside of you to do that. I never would have thought in my life I would be standing on the corner with a Bible telling the world that the, the Lord's going to come back to destroy the wicked but you preserve his people. Let alone me, me knowing I'm one of these people. Growing up, my grandmother always used to have the Christian Television Network turned on. She would always send money to the quote unquote J's, right? She would always send money to them. But I could barely get a dollar from her. Trying to find out, Grandma, you actually, you actually want to die so people see in the spirit world. Now, I know she know not, but think about that. You know what I'm saying? And then, yeah, now me coming out letting my people know who they are. It's like wisdom had to try me at first, man. Me, me and other brothers, man. Me, um, the brothers in Temple, GMS Temple, me. Tanakala, who I first who, who my protege, me, Tanakala, Ariya, Bam Yasha Allah, Hosh, Ayam, Mayaka Allah, and then they got the two, they got two more brothers up there. They used to be downtown St. Pete, man. First, if you know what first Friday is first Friday when they have a they like block off the streets, everybody walking around drinking and, and having a good time being the bakeries. Every first Friday it was like that. We'll go out there in the lion's den and we'll bring out the word, man. There's been time people want to fight us, people put our knives on us, people want to come out there and come back and shoot us. I mean, all this and that. But so we've been through that, and now when we've been through that hardship, wisdom is by our side and going to us more secrets. How often you don't, you don't see too many people coming up trying to have conversations about, oh, this is false, or they lying, or they're bickering, because the thing that elders were saying years ago is happening right now. That's why it's called prophecy. It's, it's not instant coffee. The Lord is not going to show you the signs when you're ready. That's what it's all about having faith, man. It's a something that they hope for. There's no evidence of things that you can see. But then when it comes to pass, it's like, well, you wasn't there with me shooting, making shots in the gym, but now you want to try and get on with him. Like Noah, when Noah was building the ark, he told him it's going to flood. 
But over a hundred years, they were like it never rained because it almost do it was only dew on the grass. Then it started raining. So you don't think they want to get on the ark? Remember, remember the scripture says the Lord closed the Lord closed the door on the ark. So even if Noah heard his heard his siblings begging on the door to get in, the Lord wasn't gonna let them in. We're doing the same thing Noah did. And what Noah did, we're gonna constantly keep coming out, letting it listen. The Lord said, I sent my I sent my messages out B times, B times that you mock my messages. And the Lord said he did it out of love. I mean, do you think do you think the elders want to be here for another two or three decades preaching this now? Man, you want to get the hell out of here. But like the scriptures say, through much tribulation shall we enter to the kingdom of heaven. So, it, so if there's going to be a period of, of, of vexation and mass tribulation, that means that it's starting now. It's already here now. That's just the title of the video, man. We vex man with this wicked society. See, these people don't have faith like we do. So they think in like five years from now it'll get better. Well, they're thinking about their toddlers. They're saving their money right now for their toddler to go to college. Their college ain't gonna be there. The toddler's not gonna grow up to probably even go to elementary school the way the world's going right now. Because major prophecies is happening. I know I'm kind of just going off in the spirit right now, but we vexed with all this bullshit, man. You know? Vexed with it. Going back to Sarah chapter four. Verse 18, then will she return the straight way unto him and comfort him. That goes back to your house, I say, in 1 Thessalonians, the fourth chapter. He said, comfort you one another with these words, right? Because I can talk to anybody in the world outside the body of your house, I man, if they ever mention God, first thing that comes to my mind, you're talking about JC. First thing that comes to my mind, you probably thinking about John 3 16. First thing that comes to my mind, I've accepted the Lord and Savior. No, no, man. They're not coming in the same spirit of your hell about seeing our show. Right? So it's like, if I'm gonna have if I'm gonna be comforted by the words of somebody else, other than the words of the scripture, I know it'll be a brother, you know, or a sister may you know send a blessing or something. Because because whenever I'm around the brothers, man, I could, man, every time I'm around the brothers, it could be for hours. It's not gonna be like one segment of a, what a 30-minute increment. Or fifteen minute increment, maybe not even a five minute increment. Well, we, well, well, we could be talking about folly, and we still filter it through the spirit. We still filter it through the Bible somehow. That's how we live our life because every day you think about it, like on the script, like King David said it in Psalms. He said, "Blessed be the man that meditate on the law day and night." If you're meditating on the law day and night, you know that sin lieth at the door. If you know sin lieth at the door, and sin is to transgress the law. You're going to be constantly focusing on not breaking the law. And that goes back to rehearsing the righteous acts in the land of drawing water. So, yes, yeah, that's it because, hell, the world, we, the society we live in is contrary to the scriptures. But we know it's the left-hand side that made the, the Declaration of Independence, the, the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, the amendments in their own statute. And that's the left-hand side. Remember, the Lord the Lord said he ruled for the kingdom of men. Job 9, 24, the earth given to the hands of the wicked. So we can only rehearse the righteous act because we can't serve the Lord we want, the way we want to serve the Lord we want to, right? Like, it's a law for, it's a law to go against what the Lord did to Sodom and Gomorrah in Genesis 19. He created Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. You say that, you can lose your job, you can get suspended for, for being, if you don't, if you don't preach these curriculum 19 elementary students about different genders, you can lose your job as a teacher. There's no education there. There's only indoctrination. Look at that. I mean, you, you, you can be on your own podcast. You can make a joke like, I ain't gonna lie, man. When I was in the football field, my homie came from the back and hit me real hard. Pause. Or no homo. Then they'll try to counsel you, man. Right? Shalom, shalom, my brother. You how about you know, I shine about you if I could that's broke it down. Right? So even so, even in this society. You want to rehearse the rights act, but you can't even do it to the fullest, man. But technically, you're supposed to make law for them. You're supposed to take them and burn them at the state, according to the Lord. But then now, now they promote adultery, like Kiki Palmer, the situation. Her baby daddy uh, pretty much, quote unquote, broke up with her. And then they say her way of getting revenge is starring, is being featured in Usher's video or something like that. Come on, man, that's whoredom. That's, that's that Jezebel spirit. She all on the stage talking about 
my son bought me my ass and stuff like that, whatever. But she ain't not fault. She not only the only one that fault. Usher, you have fault too. You got all them married women, them women that get them, them women that got men, they, they all up there um um salivating over you and, and openly embarrassing their other man, all because you're famous, you know, top of that. Then you get sued what? Almost 10 years ago. I, I say probably about like eight, seven years ago, because some woman claimed that you had an STD. You had green pus coming out your, you know what? And but all the women falling over you, man. Come on, man. Right? That's the way we live in. Like Usher, Usher, and, and Kiki Palmer. I'm just saying, like they had sex, they're supposed to be put to death. And that woman should not be able to leave from. They didn't be on the stage wearing that type of clothing, man. Right? And then also, I mean, this I've heard terrible stories, man, about dudes in school dating girls who were virgins. You know, very feminine and all of that. They are they them only so they can have sex with them one time and leave them. Man, that's devastating as hell. Them dudes gonna get it too. That ain't right. Dudes out here that love to sleep with married women. Oh man, that ain't right. You out here, you out here jumping from this one and that one. You got multiple kids all around, but you don't want to be in the part. You you don't want to be a part of their life. Man, I got I got a cousin right now, man. Wait, too to tell to to, uh, to always have time with the children with visitation. It's all around, man. It's just all messed up. It's all messed up from both sides, man. You know? So at the end of the day, this this is what this is what comforts me. These words, man. Out of everything that we got going, out, of, out of everything that we got going on in the world, what are we always talking about? Prophecy. Prophecy, prophecy. That's the key ingredient. The key ingredient of the ministry is prophecy. There are different uh, there's different essences like um healing you no know, speaking different languages curses blessings uh admiration exhortation admonishment man, all you know on um, being a teacher there's all different types of studies man all different types of essences of the scriptures well what remember what paul said paul said it the best but rather we should do what could everybody say you should love you should love you should love but Paul was a man that Yahweh Shai chose to be uh, to be chosen as a as a chosen vessel. This is First Corinthians chapter fourteen, verse one, and it reads: "Follow after charity. This is charity. Charity, charity is brotherly love, and desire spiritual gifts. So let your let your gifts come from on high, but that's spiritual, right? Because the Lord dwells in the spirit realm." But rather that ye may prophesy. So the Lord say charity is good. Praying and asking the Lord to increase your faith. That all that is great. But rather the main thing you should do is prophesy. And that ain't what they're doing inside these churches. I had just uploaded a video, probably like uploaded a video probably like about about two days ago. I'm not mistaken, two days ago, yesterday. And it was like about 60 to 70 percent of people inside these churches. They're fearful of the future. They're fearful of the future because their pastors or whoever their lead, their spiritual leaders are, they're not warning them of the uh, the embedded danger that's coming. And the crazy thing about it, the only ones who can tell you that are the prophets, which you have to be an Israelite, right? Israelite man or woman. Now let me get it straight. When I say woman, that just mean that that's a woman that technically a prophet is would be a, a woman who's the wife of a prophet, right? But a prophet is the also be a daughter of Jacob, a daughter of Sarah that has vision, right? So yeah, we all get vision, jo Joel. Joel 2 and 27, it says your sons and your daughters shall have visions. So only the Israelites, now the Lord, oh, he dealt with heathens in the past gave them visions, but who, who will the Lord send for? His prophet, matter of fact, the Lord even asked that. Let's get it. The Lord even asked that, man. Psalms. This is Psalms 94. Psalms 94 and 16. Let me, matter of fact, 14. Ooh, let me start at 12. Let's get it. Let's get it. This goes right. This goes right into what I'm talking about. The vexation and all that. That's the chastening right now. They be going through Psalms 94 and 16. I'm sorry, 12. 
Blessed is the man. Blessed is the man who made this hold. Blessed is the man whom thou chasteneth, O Lord, the Howard, and teachest him out of thy law. So why are we being chastened? Because we're we're the we're good individuals in Malachi 3 and 16 that, that feared the Lord and thought upon his name. That's why the book of remembrance is only written and made for us. So the Lord chastises us and give us what is law. So 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 think about it. You know when you were younger, if you ever got if you ever got whooped like me, I'm gonna go and they'll pick up anything. She'll pick up she'll pick up a big knife and hit it with the blunt end of it. She'll pick up a shoe, a wire hanger. She'll pick up anything she can, a stitchy cord. They run me out. My mama husband used to bare hands. Sometimes we had that belt with that metal dangling. But then my, uh, my grandma, when she really wanted to punish us, she'll make me go outside and get my own switch. One time as I got older, I thought I was wise. They're going to break that little flimsy stick. That's a, a switch. She made me look She made me look behind the um, tunic to eat that at all. She made me look behind the door, and there was, <laughs> there was a stick by that bed. Man, she wore my ass out, man. You know, but that goes back to chastity. But why? But why? But why was I getting whooped? Because I was doing something wrong. I was doing something wrong. That's why I was getting chastity. Same thing with the nation of Israel. We did what? We, the first thing we did. The first thing we did as a nation, we committed spiritual fornication. We started worshiping other idols and other gods. Right? Even coming out of Egypt. Remember the golden bull? What was it called? Um, Apsus. I forgot the name of it. Right? The golden bull. I mean, come on, the Lord did all the great miracles. The Lord had the Lord and the Lord had Moses staff turned to a snake. The Lord had it to where the whole harvest was was, was smitten with, with snow and frost. The Lord had turned a river to blood, had frogs everywhere. And then, then the Lord, he also took the firstborn of everything in Egypt. Everything in Egypt. Then on top of that, Going through the um the straight the straight of um Suez, I think the straight of the Gulf of Suez, going through the Gulf of Suez, the lowest part of the sea and swallowed up all of Pharaoh's armies. And that really happened because that's like a a 1998, 97 footage of them of them doing the scale of the sea. And you can literally see there's a wheel down there that looked like it's an ancient wheel, and you can see a part of the chariot. So you can't tell me that that wasn't actually Pharaoh. That was Pharaoh, right? But what I'm saying is that we see all these wonderful acts happening and people going to commit spiritual fornication. So, and that goes away from the law because the Lord said that the nation of Israel, he said that we are we are his woman. Right? Matter of fact, let's just get it. Let's just go. Let's go right into it. He said that we are like a calmly delicate woman. Isaiah 54. So, so you gotta understand why the Lord is vexed at us. We committed, we committed for we left him. No, when you get with your man, you bound by your man for, for the rest of your life. The Lord, we were, we're bound to the Lord for all of eternity because we're his wife when we left him. Isaiah 54, verse. Isaiah 54 and 5. For thy maker is thine husband. So what does that make us? His wife. Yahweh of hosts is his name. And thy redeemer. So not only our husband, our redeemer. The holy one of Israel, the God of the whole earth, shall he be called. But remember, that's our husband. Though. That's the, he going to be the power over the whole earth. And we left, I'm going to say that, but we left him. For them, we left him for statues that we built for our damn selves. That's why I'm vexed. Because look at what we have right now. And this is what y'all want two thirds? I want this shit? No, oh, no, man. I'm tired of this. Let me keep going though. Verse 6 For the Lord have called thee as a woman forsaken and grieved in spirit and a wife of you when thou wast refused, saying thy God. And like one of the best examples I could think of was the diary of a mad black woman. I don't like the title. I actually, I actually do adore that actress. I don't know she's attracting, but that's that's besides the point. Like how she was, I guess you said she was doing everything she was supposed to do as a wife, and he left her stranded in the ancient world. They don't think there's no woman working as man does. 
if a woman had a let's say a woman had a husband and she had five kids, five kids and he died in the war, like his family will absorb her, but she ain't got no family. She'd just be a woman out there by herself. That's why the oldest profession was what prostitution, because a man would not want to deal with another man's woman unless unless they was gonna do something. So then they would turn that woman to a whore. That's why the Lord said, if a man have sex with a woman, he's supposed to be with her all the days of her life. All right. So it's, it it it, it gonna work out for both sides. And guess what? Not only have we have sex with she bound with him. Now you gotta care for her. So the scripture says, he that get up a wife, get up a possession. So you will take care of your possession, like how Jane had to take care of their Jane, take care of their cars and all that. You will take care of your woman in that same like manner. That's, so think about it. Now how will look at us like that? I swallowed up Pharaoh and his army. I cast out the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Hittites, the Jebusites, the Gergesites. All right? The Ammonite kings, I got rid of them for you. Moab came up against you with Esau, stomped them down. I fought wars for you. I will prove kings for you. I gave you a land. I gave you a holy order. I, I made you a nation with priests. All of that. I called you gods. And you chose to do what? You chose to go and worship an idol rather than worship heaven. He who made heaven and earth. So now the Lord's vexation is on us. And while the scripture says we are smitten by the, the madness of the Lord. Our people are smitten with madness, man. And they drive me crazy too. I'm vexed with it, man. Tired of Jake on YouTube. I was trying to make a new meme. I was trying to make more pranks. I was trying to be funny, man. I mean, Jake, that's a clown out here, man. That like, we've come from fighting just to be treated as equals to the point it's like the KKK ain't even got to take us down no more. We killing ourselves quicker than the police can now. Like that, like that's the state we in right now. We just the bunker. All right. So going back, I know I'm kind of going all around, man. The spirit just got me like that right now. Proverbs 29 and 2, verse 16 and 18. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. And when the wicked bear rule, the people mourn. All right? I mean, everybody has to put on some type of mask or something. Because everybody's going through something. There's nowhere in the world you can say everything is right with you right now. Or like your whole life, all the aspects of your life is good. I mean, think about this. LeBron James saw went into cardiac arrest a couple weeks ago. All the money in the world he got, them rings and all that, he don't care about none of that, especially when he found out his... How do you think he felt about all those accolades and all this? He didn't care about that. He cared about his son. Right? Everybody. Even to, with, with like, prime example, a famous actor's father or mother can die, and it's all over the newspaper. But then what about the lady? What about the young lady whose grandmother passed away um, at her job bagging groceries because they ain't enough money for the time in the SSI? No, they don't report that. You get what I'm saying? So this for everybody. Like everybody's going to something. Even the he is fed up with, with each other. And, and guess what? They all thought they all became rules over us because of us going to captivity. Now y'all going to take each other out. That's how you know the Lord rules in the kingdom of men. They all used us the way they wanted to. Now they built their countries, built off of blood from us. And now all y'all gonna take each other out while we're gonna build on while we're gonna build on top of your ruins. And guess what we're gonna do? You're gonna be the ones to destroy your own kingdoms. We're gonna use you also to, to build up our kingdom. To your kingdoms or your country. Our kingdom's gonna be on earth, the whole entire earth. That's the difference. Right? So I'm talking about everybody, like we got laws where if, if, if a stranger or someone from another another tribe, whatever, another country, and they pass through your land, and you have fruit that falls on the ground, you, this is the law, in the Bible. Me, I can't pick my own fruit up off the ground. You wanna know why? Because whoever the stranger is, if they're hungry, they're allowed to eat that fruit off the ground, but they can't pick the fruit off the tree. That's food stems right there. That was a law. But you know what they got here in Florida? They got those orange groves. And guess who owns it? The government. So that law don't apply here. You know? So you got people out here begging for change when, like, if you would just allow them to get some fruit off a tree that God created, your how about Shema Shah created, these people wouldn't be starving out here. But because you want to corner, corner the market, you want to monopolize the market, people can barely even, you know, survive. Barely. I'm telling you, people can barely survive living paycheck to paycheck. This is really happening. 
right? So going back, this is Proverbs 29 and 2. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked bear rule, the people mourn. Wait a minute. Who are those people over there in the Holy Land? I thought the scripture says when the when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. They're still bombing the West Bank. And where is King David? And why haven't all nations turned their on um, their swords into plowshares? They're still warring. That's a proverb. You know? Speaking of proverb, Proverbs chapter 29, verse 16. When the wicked are multiplied, right? Transgression increase, increasing. But the righteous shall see their fall. That's why, that's why I say you, you got the elder one for the 10, 20, 30 years. No. Nobody scripture says there'll be seven things that matter of fact, I'm gonna get that going. I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna just get it. You gotta understand. We're talking about the place to where the Lord said, You are not my people. There it shall be said, You are the sons of the living power. In that same place, you're gonna be saved out of the same place. It will be a great vision for the men of the Lord and it's in a few sisters that do truly believe to witness rather than us oh the Lord just take me out and I wake up in the kingdom no man do, do much tribulation in the kingdom of heaven man this is a rock So Rock chapter 25, verse 7. There be nine things which I have judged in my heart to be happy. Listen to this, y'all. Nine things I have judged in my heart to be happy. This is beautiful. In the tenth, I will utter with my tongue. This is what make the king happy. A man that have joy of his children. And he that liveth to see the fall of his enemy. Right? Well, it's him that dwelleth with a wife of understanding. And that have not slipped with his tongue, and that have not served a man more unworthy than himself. Well is him that have found prudence, and he that speaketh in the ears of him that will hear. Oh, how great is he that findeth wisdom! Exclamation mark. Yet is there none above him that feareth the Lord. Think about that, man. Come on. A man that have joy of his children, see the fall of his enemy, have a wife of understanding, that, uh, that gets prudence, and that also can obtain wisdom. What is more beautiful than that? That sounds like a kingship to me. Come on, man. So how the hell can you tell me that the righteous ruling right now? Because they got this child support going on, this divorce thing going on, right? And the enemy still ruling over us. And then there's no knowledge of the Lord. There's no fear of the Lord. There's no talk of judgment. This can't. This can't be it. This can't be it. This can't be it. Fear heaven. Proverbs chapter 2, verse 18. Where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. So if there is no vision, the people perish. That's why I did that um, video about like 60 to 70 percent of modern day Christians are fearful for the future. Why? Because your, your shepherds have no vision. They can't see that there are raving and wolves out there waiting to get you. That's what it is, man. Really. Those shepherds are really sheep and wolves. Those so I say shepherds and wolves. Uh, wolves and shepherds clothing. Man, I'm trying, I'm trying to be cool and messing up. All right? So this is Psalm 7, verse 9 to 11. Oh, let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end, but establish the just. For the righteous God triumph the hearts and reigns. So the Lord knows your mind, your mind, your mind. My defense is of God, Yahweh, Yahweh, Shai. Which saveth the upright in heart. So the Lord is going to save who? Those who are upright in heart. How do you do that? With the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of the scriptures. Going back to the law. Like even Paul said, I dare any of you to go to the law. Because it's like, if you're going to speak, if you speak of the law, you must speak of faith. Because the two thirds can keep the law, but, keep, but, but still believe JC. Two, a two thirds can keep the law, but believe JC is saving. Because faith comes from Yahweh, Yahweh Shai. Remember it said that Paul heard a voice from the heavens and it said to me in the Hebrew tongue, 
So when he said his name, he said it in Hebrew. Anyhow, this is Psalm 7 and, and 11. God judgeth the righteous, and Yahweh Shemal Shai is angry with the wicked every day. Every day the Lord is angry with the wicked. So when you think about, so like I say, I have my moments, I'll be like, man, man, it's, you know, I'll be like, man, these people getting on my nerves, man. I'm tired of being around these humans. I, I think like that, right? So it's like, if the Lord's angry with the wicked every day, always remember this. So, you know, when you, you feel like you're having a bad day, remember. So, you feel like, you know, the evil spirit into you. Even the left hand side who worked for the Lord, he angry with them too. You know, I, mean, I, I, I despise evil. I despise wickedness. Usually, he despises all of that. But he created it too. Right? So, you should love the good and hate the evil. Let's get back to it. So, like, this is going back to the book of Open Up with. This is Ashley chapter 8. Verse 5. Whoso keepeth the commandment shall feel no evil thing. And a wise man's heart discern of both time and judgment. So a wise man will discern what? Both time and judgment. So a wise man, surely oppression maketh the wise man mad, knowing what? That Satan have, have but a little time. So he's so oppressed. The word oppression, oppression. He's constantly applying pressure, but because we're not of this world, all we can do is what? Endure to the end and be saved. So those who fear the Lord and keep the law, we ain't going to feel no evil thing. So we have the wisdom to discern the time and the judgments to come. Right? He's asking, but I'm, I'm getting back to the point of the Lord. We ain't wicked, though. But that was, that was something I was going to just let go by. He's asking 8 and 7. But he know of, I'm sorry, verse 6. Because to every purpose there is time and judgment, therefore the misery of man is great upon him. But they don't see the calm before the storm. This is the calm before the storm. Right? What movie was that? I think it was, I think it was the day after tomorrow. You know, when like, it was just a whole bunch of crazy natural disasters. It was getting cold, and then it was just, it was just something like that. And, and there was, there was a certain conglomerate of people that was in the helicopter like towards the end of the movie looking down at the disasters. It's one of them people they said those those men on the sign, those men on the corner with those signs were right. That's in the movie, y'all. But they're trying to use natural disasters being the end. No, it's gonna be thermonuclear destruction and the Lord's holy angels, right? In the middle of the Lord, which which would be the fish is turning into hunters. But the point of what the point of me bringing that up is is that they know that what we're speaking is true, right? So, jumping down to Ecclesiastes 8 and 12. All right, Esau. All right, Esau. Ecclesiastes verse 8, verse 11. Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. Hey, man, call her lawyer like how about you? I'm sure if I can die. He's, I'm going to use him as an example. Of why, when that stuff like that happens, remember this. Ecclesiastes 8 and 11. Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. You know why I'm out here. You know what I'm saying? Like Marshall Lynch said, you hey, y'all know why I'm here. I mean, so I don't get fine. Anyhow, Ecclesiastes 8 and 11. Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. Therefore, the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. Though a sinner do evil a hundred times, and his days be prolonged, yet surely I know it shall be well with them that fear Yahweh Shinao Shai, which fear before him. But it shall not be well with the wicked. Is that? Because he angry with the wicked every day. Come on, let us sink in, right? But it shall not be well with the wicked, neither shall he prolong his days, which are a shadow. Because he feared not before God. So, so Psalms, was it Psalm 7 and 9, or Psalm 7 and 11, you can correlate that precept with Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 11, and read on down. So if the Lord's angry with the wicked every day, notice that even though it seems as though that day is prolonged, there is a day where the Lord's gonna where the Lord's gonna is gonna go well with those who fear him, but it's not gonna go with the wicked. 
Shalom, Shalom, the form of Hashem, our Shabbat, by Shem Kakadash. Welcome. That's right. So, going back, the priest of Zahai, back, he saw ruling, which is why the world and the state is in. Second Maccabees chapter 7, verse 31 through 35. I'm a wee bit parts, mate. And thou that has been the author of all mischief against the Hebrews, the Israelites, shall not shall not go unpunished. But we suffer because of our sins. So we know why we suffer. That's why I mean, that's why I'm saying I'm best with Jake. Because Jake is reprobates, man. They don't want to they don't want to take heed to what the Lord is saying. So they're the ones who pretty much put on um, Jake too though is, is the reason. Like I said, we the spirit of the Lord. They're prolonging, they're quote unquote extending Esau's kingdom because we're the biggest deceivers. Jake spin by Esau get rich up of because we are like all uh, conspicuous spenders. I saw a brother upload this video before. I'm gonna get back to it. Brother upload a video before. He said, When you see Jake wearing all these Gucci shirts that got Gucci all on it, got Gucci all the small letters, and they got like Prada. You know, you can see those designs and you can see the old. Oh, oh, that's those brands are not what the rich. Let's say if you want those, like Grey Anatomy or something, he mentioned Mark, Mark Zuckerberg. He said, You see this picture right here? This, this is famous or something like that. See the Gucci and Potter all over. All right. Probably work like this. Old outfit. He said, Look at the shirt that Mark Zuckerberg. No, y'all, this, this is like a regular shirt that you can buy out of Walmart. He said that shirt was worth five hundred dollars. That one shirt. He said because of the quality of the material, how it feels on the skin. So what I'm saying is that Jake, man, they, they, they just prolong the society and they want to be a part of it. Well, Esau got you in the trick bag, man. Right? So anyhow, so we suffer because of our sins. And remember, the Lord not only judge individuals, He judge nations. Because when people say Esau like to say, "Oh, I didn't put your people into captivity." Then what it says in Isaiah 14, I have I, I haven't even thought about this piece of Lord just gave me the piece of the, the mind. Isaiah 14 and 31, when it says on oh, 21, when it said, and prepare slaughter for their children's children. Why is that? Because you reap the benefits of what your forefathers have done. That's why. That's why. So the Lord not only He not only judged individuals, He also judged nations. Prime example, um, in Egypt. There could have been Israelites that was cool with Egyptian like Jake is today. You know, we're peaceful people. And guess what happened? Every firstborn was put to death. So the Lord judged nations, man. The Lord judged nations. All because of Pharaoh, but really the Lord wanted to harden Pharaoh to show his power. I don't care. I do what I please. Psalms 115 and 3. Paul dropped second Maccabees 1 and 28. Punish them that are cold. Punish them that oppress us. With pride, do wrong. With pride, do wrong. Like that book on without sanctuary. Yo, the first postcards was pictures of us being charged. Heard the law at home. Right? They'll say, We had a barbecue last week. What do you think the barbecue was? When they used to burn our bodies. It took pride in that. The Levi Jean, the symbol with the, the two stallions going the opposite directions, with the, it looked like it's a rope tied to it. They used to be a Jake in the middle of that. They'll beat them to the biggest Jake, and they'll beat them down to the death. You know, when they tar and feather people on TV for, for comedy, they used to do that to embarrass us. Then they'll pour tar on them. Feathers, remind you, we doing this in front of the women and the children. I didn't think the, the quote unquote black woman got to feel like she got to be so strong because they see how weak these are made us look in slavery. It's a mind thing, it's a mental thing. Like, why, why should I go to you? That's Big Daddy. Right, so I'm actually to slay um Django. They put it into a chemical format, but that's really what happened. But then they are then that they are um tied ropes, one ankle to one end of another horse, another ankle to another end of another horse, and then they are light him on fire. After they beat him half to death, tarred him, put feathers on him, light him on fire, beat both horses until they ripped them apart. Did this in front of the women and children, and that's why our women to this day have so much respect for Esau because he. They know it's a psychological thing. It's a generational curse, which really is a spiritual curse that we have amongst our, amongst our people, man. Even the hatred, 
right? House nigga, field nigga. <laughs> it's it's spiritual, but it's like you gotta look at it. It's in the Bible. That's what we went through. That's who we were. You know? It's like it, man. Spiritual. The palm dropped Psalm seventy two and four. He shall judge the poor of the people. He shall save the children of the needy and shall break in, pe and break in pieces the oppressor. And you know what that goes back to? Breaking the staff for the wicked. So remember, a staff is also a, a, um, symbolic to strength. Like if you think about it, a king was sitting there on his throne and he'll have a what? A staff or another word, a scepter. Right? Why do you think the Pope walks around with a staff, a scepter, right? With the moon, which is actually Allah. And the Dogon had to go back to the fish god of the Hamites. And the rosemary bees, it goes back to Hinduism. Catholicism means what? Universal. Man, this is just so much wickedness, man. These people claim to be God's people, and, and, and they promote all the wickedness, man. We all black magic. They do all, they do all this with fire, y'all. So listen, I'm still thinking about your precept, huh? About um that uh oh, second Michael piece 128. Yeah, oh damn, I didn't know I had skill Michael Call Let's get back to it though. Second Michael chapter 7, verse 33. And though the living Lord be angry with us a little while for our chastening and correction, yet shall he be at one again with the servants. That goes back to the salvation. So the Lord um Come, 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 sister. Come. Now, now, imagine, imagine this though. So, imagine this though. Well, how much I die for our sins to be reconciled? It says that the scripture to reconcile us back to the Father. So the Lord gonna be the Lord. He loves us to this day. He mad at us. Turn it back. But Esau, he hates you. He created you. Hey, let that sink in. The Lord, remember the Lord said, I the Lord, the Lord God created all things, yea, even the wicked for the day of evil. That's Proverbs 16 and 4. You know? Second Maccabees chapter 7, verse 34. But thou, O godless man, and all and of all other most wicked, damn, be not lifted up without a cause, nor puffed up with uncertain hopes. Oh, you know, we're gonna go to Mars in 2030. Or or you know what? We're gonna we're gonna continue. Remember what it says that it, they named the names after their own and named the lands after their own names. And the inward part is that their that their children shall go on, their kingdom shall go on for generation to generation. They think they're gonna rule forever, right? <laughs> Be not lifted up without a cause, nor puffed up with uncertain hopes. Lift it up by hand against the service of God. Oh my God, there's my little piece Against the service of God. I think it's in Isaiah. I see you dropping Isaiah off. I think it's in Isaiah. About the compass. The compass. I think it's Isaiah 14. Oh, boy, my shot. Isaiah 14 and Isaiah 14 and 9. Hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. It stirreth up the dead for thee, even all the chief ones of the earth. It hath raised up from their thrones all the kings of the nations. All they shall speak and say unto thee, Art thou also become weak as we? Art thou become like unto us? Talking about America. Crazy. Verse 11, thy pump is brought down to the grave. In the noise of thy violas, the worm is spread under thee, and the worms cover thee. That's the man, that's 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 poetry. But to be pompous means to be boastful. So the pride say your pump is brought down to the grave, meaning that I'm gonna take that pride from you. Thy pump is down to the grave. It says the worm is under you, not the worm covers you. What happens when you, when the body decays? It turns to worms. So it's saying that they're going to kill that pride, man. That pump is going to be brought low. That's why it says... Where was it? I just had it. I'm going to read that off. I got you. I got you. I got you. I'm going to try to do 
18 things at one time. It's pretty good. But it says, 2 Maccabees chapter 7, verse 34. But thou, O godless man, and of all other most wicked, be not lifted up without a cause, nor puffed up with uncertain hopes, lifted up by hand against the servants of God. And the servants really, at, we're talking about the elect right now. The elect. Can remember, it says in Revelation, the seventh chapter, it says to harm not the earth or the sea till the Lord has gathered his servants. And it goes on to mention 144,000. But the, the third part brought through the fire is not only going to be the 144,000, but the one third that mainly consists of women and children. Right? Here, the sister man, I believe you have by Shimon Shah. I give him power. It's the only thing I'm really worried about. Lord, the Lord, have mercy for my mom, my auntie, my auntie, and everything I ain't saving no woman. I'm just, I'm just, I'm wrecking, I'm wrecking two thirds off her. I'm wrecking Esau. And then, you know, hey, say, try, try to save the woman. The Lord ain't beating them up. You know, who, who believe me? How about you know, so I'm doing that. That's it, man. That's it. Because remember, man, we, we was oppressed together. And when, when the scripture says, you know, deal with thy, deal with thy wife, which is the weaker vessel with wisdom, or, you know, with knowledge. Esau used our women. Think about it. That's the that's the first teacher of the child, the woman. The first teacher of a child is the mother, right? Because the father, the father's out of the field. The father has to go to the husband. How are you doing? Man? The father has to go out to the field. The father has to go to the husband. So the first teacher of any child is the mother. He's not there. He's not the doodling and playing with him. Yeah, he'll come check on the child. We're talking about in ancient times. The only time a father would really start teaching his child, especially his son, is when he hits the age of being a man, which is what puberty. Once he gets to that, once he gets to the, the stage of his life where he starts to build the conscience about himself and trying to become a become of who he is by his character. Because the father know because that's his son. He, he he will understand the characteristics of himself as his son, be like, oh. Yep, I am arrogant. Oh no, not arrogant. Um, I am um hard headed. You know, I'm very stubborn. Me, I'm very stubborn. Meaning, like, I will just use wisdom to not do something I don't want to do because I don't care how you look at it. I'm gonna do it this way. I'm kind of like that. I'm stubborn, right? So it's like you'll see that. So the first, so the first teacher is 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 the woman. So yeah, you were the weaker vessel because we're men. We're the more dominant vessel. It's not a bad thing. I wasn't supposed to be feminine. That's soft, timid. They said, why you think men went to war? Not to protect their wives and children. Duh. <laughs> but anyhow, well, not, well, you know, you get riches, which would be booty as well. You know. but anyhow, you know what the word booty means? The word booty means like spoils of war. That's why you look at women. Oh, damn, look at that booty over there. Because women are really a possession. Like, right? think about it. It, it won't be. Think about the words we use today. But let me let me get back to it, man. I'm just saying, like, Esau is wicked, man. He's going down. He's gonna go down. We all gonna be all right. Second Maccabees chapter 7, verse 35. But thou hast not yet escaped the judgment of Almighty God who seeth all things. So the Lord see also Esau. Your pump is gonna be brought low. Like the Lord said. Pride go before destruction, and pride has deceived you. Hey, Amen. What was it? The second Maccabees 1 and 28. My God. I love that one. It's like it. Uh, Isaiah 54 and 8. In a little wrath, I hid my face from you for a moment, but with everlasting kindness will I have mercy on thee, saith the Lord thy Redeemer. Beautiful. That went right with us. Hey, spirit heavy. That went right with that second that could be seven I had read earlier. When the Lord would have said he'll be at he'll he will be at peace with us, but you won't got this man right. He saw the Lord created you when he ate you. That's crazy in a good way. So this is the prayer of Azariah, chapter one, verse one to sixteen. I'm gonna read through this and then I'm gonna close out soon. So you gotta remember when they when they when they put um Azariah when they put Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego in the fire, it's because they didn't want to comply with whatever the king was. The king that they would be a president. 
So like whatever federal or, or executive order they put out, there would be like an edict. So they were put into the fire, but they was walking around. Nothing touched them. Think about that. So that would be like, just like in these days, there's an edict that you may have to what? Get something put in your right hand or your forehead if you want to buy and sell. They already doing it in Sweden. You get what I'm saying? So, so you, so you got to put yourselves in their shoes. Whew. Let me not say that loosely. Like that. You have to envision what they went through. Let's just say that. Yeah, envision what they went through. Just imagine like like like, like CGI, like, like Esau making this into a movie. Prayer of Azariah, chapter 1, verse 1 through 16. And they walked in a fire and they walked in the midst of the fire praising God and blessing the Lord. Then Azariah stood up and prayed on this manner and opened his mouth in the midst of the fire saying, I envision that. Walking in the fire, hands up praying. So and think about this. Now, now think about this in realistic, in realistic. Or at the top of the pit they not going to be hearing men well. They're going to hear men talking in the Hebrew tongue, praying to their God. Do you not know? Do you not know? That, I got to say it. That's what you call a mind fuck. Like, what? They're not crying, they ain't hollering. So you, they, they probably want to try and look and see, you know, but it's fine, right? So, pray as a wire one and three. Blessed art thou, O Lord God of our fathers. Thy name is worthy to be praised and glorified forevermore. Forever and everlasting. But thou art righteous in all the things that thou hast done to us. Yea, true are all thy works, thy ways are right, and all thy judgments truth. In all the things that thou hast brought upon us and upon the holy city of our fathers, even Jerusalem, Thou hast executed great, great, forgive me, true judgment, Mashapat. For according to truth, Amoth, and I'm sorry, yeah, truth, Amoth, and judgment didst thou bring all these things upon us because of our sins. So when you talk about slavery, think about it. I was talking about camp, I was talking about camp last week. I Man, Esau, he know how to talk to you to try and get you upset, but it's funny. I use wisdom. He was like, yeah, you know, I mean, when you called me an Edomite, I could have walked by and said, hey, you're a slave. I'm like, yeah, I am a slave. I'm still a slave here. I said, I have a social security card and a birth certificate. So do you. I'm like, I wouldn't tell you that I'm still a slave on the Esau in Babylon. And so he couldn't try and rob me up with his um, his, his slitherous, snakish ways. I just used, I told the truth. Yeah, you're right. I am I am still a slave. So, like, you got, you got to think about it like that, you know? Like, we're here because of our sin. Yeah, you did it, and you did it with pride, but man, that's not gonna make that second like the reason with a 28 for real. You did it with pride, right? And even if you read in the, in the first Matthew, the third chapter, it speaks about how it said we fight, it says they fight us, but they fight us in pride, but we fight them to protect our our, our children and our family. So you're like, think about Esau coming at us with his pride, but we do it, we do it because of our family. Right? That's a sweet. Verse 6. For we have sinned and committed iniquity departed from thee. And all things have we trespassed and not obeyed thy commandments. Nor kept them, neither done as thou hast commanded us, that it might go well with us. Even to this day, even to this day they say that they're saved. They'll say they'll say that he died for our sins. But if he died for your sins, if he died for your sins, why are you not keeping the law? Oh, we're not under the law. So that don't make no sense. That's like you going to jail. I bail you out so you can commit the same crime. Like people don't even think rationally. The Lord didn't die for you to commit for you to continue to sin. It was for you to repent and not to willfully sin. So that's stupid to think that the Lord died so that you can continue to sin. That's like me bailing someone out of jail so they can commit the same crime. That's just foolishness. So yeah, so I understand. Like even to this day, they still don't keep the commandments. But they say they say. Yeah, Proverbs fifteen to twenty five. The Lord will destroy the house of the proud. Will establish the border of the widow. Right. 
Is that uh, the mother, the motherland? Remember, it says on um, Galatians 4 and 21, it says that Jerusalem, she is the mother of us all. So when they say Africa is the motherland, Africa is not the motherland. Civilization didn't even start in Africa. Civilization started in like Shinar uh, in the Acadias, like in um, Europe, Chaldi, like pretty much where you see where Jordan is, Jordan, um, Israel, Palestine, that whole area is where civilization started. It didn't start in Africa. It spread into the it spread to the east of Africa, coming from the south, the southwest of, of where the land of Eden would be on, on the ancient map. Hey, come on, man, stop. So I, let me get back to you. So um prayer Azariah chapter one, verse six, verse eight. Wherefore all that thou hast brought upon us. And everything that thou hast done to us, thou hast done in true judgment. And thou didst deliver us, and thou didst deliver us into the hands of lawless enemies, most hateful forsakers of God, and to an unjust king in the most wicked in all the world. So he had to be very upset to have done But listen to what Azariah said. You what you've done is true judgment. And you've given us to the hands of the most wicked in the world. So that, so that goes to show you that the punishment was so harsh because of the sins were so harsh. Like I've done all these works, brought you out of, out of, out of um, Egypt, and you want to go and make a golden calf and say this is your God? That's like, that's, like, that's like a man doing everything he's supposed to as a husband, and a woman seeks some, some other man when he's giving his all. A woman done all that she's done as a wife, and a man don't appreciate it either. You go vice versa. It's like I've done all of this, and this is how you repay me. This, this is your what's what I'm looking for. Um, this is this is the gratitude that you show me, right? So this is why we where we are today, in the hands of the most wicked of the world. Verse ten, and now we cannot open our mouths. We are become a shame and a reproach to thy servants. And to them that worship thee, yet deliver us not up wholly. That's why you have the elect. You have you have the the remnant of Israel, right? He's not going to destroy the whole nation. For thy name's sake, neither disannul thy covenant. So when you talk about salvation in the New Testament, the Gentiles were Israelites who was taken captive under another nation, so they were like the Gentiles. The covenant was always from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the 12 tribes of Israel. The graft again goes back to the Israelites who cut off from the root by what? Taking on the custom of the heathens. That's the Gentiles. Right? Gentiles are not going to be saved. No. Anyhow. Verse 12. And cause not thy mercy to depart from us for thy beloved Abraham's sake, for thy servant Isaac's sake, and for thy holy Israel say, that's that's cut the claim right there. To whom thou hast spoken and promised, spoken and promised, that thou wouldest multiply their seed as the stars of heaven and as the sand that lieth upon the seashore. For we, O Lord, are become less than any nation. We don't even have a seat. We don't have a seat in NATO, we don't have a seat in the EU. We ain't really got no seat in no parliament. You may see a Jake work for them, but what land are they claiming? Oh, it's already it's already been colonized by Britain or England or from France, right? Come on, man, think about it. Or from Spain, right? We're parking these cars in ten minutes. Okay, let me get through this. So we, O oh Lord, become less than any nation and be kept under their under this day in all. The world because of our split. That's the thing. Ooh, it is. It is. Man, you cannot tell when he's not talking about us. You gotta do a video. For we, O oh Lord, are become less than any nation and be kept under this day and all the world because of our sins. There's no other nation on the face of the earth that was literally sold to the entire world. We've been sold to the entire world. Being a translated slave trade. Can't make that up. We've been literally sold to the entire world. All right. Verse 15. 
Neither is there any at this time prince or prophet, the prophets are here, or leader or burnt offering or sacrifice or oblation or incense or place to sacrifice before thee and to find mercy. Which is why Yahweh Shah had to become a sacrificial lamb. Nevertheless, in a contrite heart and a humble spirit, let us be accepted. So envision this entire prayer. This is when they're in the fire. He's walking around. Remember, the Babylonians, they don't hear men yelling and yelling and crying. They hear this man telling the Lord, what you've done to us is true judgment. Because we sinned against you. We've been scattered all over the world. But in a very contrite and humble spirit, accept us. But you know, I read a lot more, but this is what they're hearing out of the fire as they're praying to the Lord. Man, they had to blow their mind. But that's the faith that these men have. These holy men have, right? But it goes back to remember the Lord did this to us because of our sin. But the Lord's going to pay them back. Like right here Isaiah 10 and 33 from the brother of the farm. Behold, the Lord, the Lord of hosts, shall lock the bow of terror. I love that. And the high ones, and the high ones of stature shall be hewn down, and the haughty shall be humble. Yeah. Humble means brought down to the ground, very low, very low. So I'm gonna close out with these precepts. First Peter chapter five, verse six through ten. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, and how about shall shine, that He may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon Him. For he cares for you. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour, whom resists that fast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are, are accomplished in your brethren that are, are in the world. So you that's why you have brothers all over the world. And, and, that's, and that's a cut. So there's no such thing as black Hebrew Israelites. Because we're all over the world, right? So that's why it's it's no such thing as a, a black person. That's a color that you will find the Crayola crayon box. You know what I'm saying? You know, Shalom, Shalom. How about Shemal Shai? About Shem Kakadash Barakata? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let's get to it. Verse ten. But the God of all grace, how about Shemal Shai, who have called us unto His eternal glory. By Mashiach Yahawashai, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. Man, that's beautiful, man. He called us into He called us into an eternal glory. It's gonna make us perfect. We gotta give our honor going praise to how about Shinar Shabbat Shinar. Gosh. Hey, it's beautiful for us to see this, but they can't see it. That, that, it's, that, that's how precious this is. It's like I said, they're walking around with their eyes wide shut. They can clearly see it, they just can't understand it. And all you can understand it is if you got faith. So that's why, hey, if, if this gospel be here, it's because the God of this world is blinded. And just and blessed are you because you have eyes to see. So with that being said, I want to give all the glory praises to the Howard by Shimei Awashai by Shimei Hakadash. Come on to the others that great millstone who rule well. To the others to the elect, to the best to the one third, and to the confusing faces of the four points of the earth. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Shalom, Akim and Akwakim.